There are 13 3 slice OBLs, and unlike the 1 and 2 slicers, most of these are going to be new to you. Starting off with good arrow pair. You know it's good if you can break up the arrow and break up the pair without touching either of the arrow pieces. So you don't want to hold it like this because it's touching the arrowhead, and you don't want to hold it like this because it's touching the feather. You want the slice to break it up evenly, and same with the pair. Now we know this is good arrow pair. So you just slice here and you get thumb thumb, which is a two slice OBL. To one look, track where this edge of this arrow goes after the first slice. So in this case, it goes to the bottom and that means you're going to do an F on the bottom layer. So you just do an F move on whichever layer the arrow edge is on after the first slice. Another example, we break up the arrow and the pair like this. And then after the first slice, the edge of the arrow or basically the feathers are going to stay on the top layer. So we're going to do an F on the top layer. And then we just have a one slice OBL. Another one, slice, this edge stayed on the bottom, so we do an F on the bottom, and then one slice OBL. Alright, next three slicer is good arrow arrows. And they're good arrows if when you put the corner in the top right, the arrows are on the same side. So this would be right arrow, right arrow, which is good. It's a three slicer. For all of the arrow arrow cases, you're gonna immediately put the corners or the arrow heads in the top right. And then you recognize if it's good or bad arrows. So this is good arrows. And this is also good arrows because they are both the same arrows. So this is like sideways and this is sideways. And this is vertical, this is vertical. So it's good. When you have good arrow arrows, you're going to slice from this position and then you're going to do a four negative two, which is a small T like this. And then you have a one slice OBL. The same rule works for left arrow, left arrow. Hold them right next to the slice um, and you slice and do a small T and then you get a one slice OBL. Next, I'm going to teach you bad arrow arrows, because even though they're four slicers, they're very similar. You're still going to hold the corners in the top right. This time, pay attention to which layer has the arrow that is sideways. So in this case, this one is sideways. After the first slice, you're going to bring this edge down to the bottom of its face. So we would do a U prime, which would bring this down to the bottom. So we slice and do a U prime, and then we get a two slice OBL. And in this situation, we would do a D prime to bring this edge to the bottom. So after we do our first slice, we're going to do a D prime. And then we have a two slice OBL, good pair pair. Next case is gem axe. This is a gem, it's an edge corner edge block. And as you can see on the axe, if you look at the inverse color, in this case the white pieces, there's an edge and a corner, and then there's a black edge. If you pretend this edge is white, then you have a pseudo gem, pseudo edge corner edge block. You're going to swap the real gem with the pseudo gem. So that means you're going to put them in the same position, like this, with the axe upright. You're going to slice, and then you just get a two slice OBO. Another example, find the pseudo gem of the axe, which basically consists of the handle, and then this separated two by one pair. I usually like to put the blade of the axe on the right. So that would put the pseudo block in the top right here, which means I would put the real gem in the top right and I would slice to swap them and then I get a two slice OBL. If you want to reduce pauses with this case, then all you have to remember is after you do the first slice, you're going to do a small move such that you only go over an edge on the gem layer. So we're going to do in this case a D because that goes over one edge so it does a negative one. We want to do like the smallest move possible on the gem layer. So we'd slice, then do a small move, go over this edge, and then we're left with the one slice OBL. For this one, we would swap this gem with the pseudo gem. After we slice, we are going to do the smallest move possible on the layer that the gem was on originally, which is a U prime, a small U prime, to do a one on bottom. Then we have a one slice OBL. Now we have good knight axe. Good knight axe is if you put both of the shapes upright. So this is an upright knight, this is an upright axe, and they are on the same side of the cube, pretty similar to thumbs. So since they're both on the right, it's good. Since these are both on the left, this is good axe knight. Now once you recognize that it's good knight axe, find these adjacent edges of the knight, and then you're going to rotate that layer so that the adjacent edges are on the opposite side of the slice from where they were before. So here they were on the right side, 
Now they're on the left side and you want to break apart the corner. For this one, the edges are on the right side of the cube once again. So you do a four on bottom to separate them and put them on the left. Here for left knight, left axe, put them on the right side of the slice since they started on the left. Then here they start on the left side. So you do a negative four on bottom and slice. And then you get good thumb thumb. And if you want to predict how to do the second slice, track where the blade of the axe goes after the first slice. So in this case, after I did my four to separate this and sliced, the blade of the axe came to the bottom layer. Do a three move on the layer that the blade is now on so that it does not go across the slice. So it started on the right side of the slice and I want to do a 90 degree rotation that keeps it on the right side. So I can't do a D prime because that would put it on the left side, but I want to do a D and then I get a one size OBO. In this case, after I did my first move to separate the adjacent corners, I would see that this blade is up here. It's still in the top layer and I want to do a 90 degree rotation so that it stays on the left side. So that would be a U prime. And then I get a one size OBO here. It's on the bottom and it's on the left. After I do my first slice, it's still here. So I'll do a D prime to keep it on the left side slice here. While we're here, we should probably cover bad axe knight. So once you put both shapes upright and you notice they're on opposite sides so it's bad, all you have to do is M2 like this and then you get a two slice OBO. I see that this is left knight, right axe, they're opposite sides so I do an M2 then I get a two slice OBO. Next case doesn't have very many variations, it's just good bunny bunny. So this is right bunny and this is right bunny. You know it's good bunny bunny when you can preserve both of them. And what you do is you put the bunnies upright. So if this is the eye of the bunny, this is the body. It's facing this way. Then the bunny is like sitting down. So that's good. You don't want it like this because the bunny is tipped over. You want to put it right here. And you want to put it in similar positions on each side. Slice. And then you get good thumb thumbs. So as a rule, you can do a big E or a big E prime. Either one works and then you'll get a one size OBO. Here's the other good bunny bunny, which is left bunny bunny. They're looking to the left, so I put it here because this way the bunny is sitting down. I preserve all the blocks, I slice, I do an E or E prime, and then I get a one size OBO. Next three slicer is Yoshi Shell. So remember for Yoshi that we look at the bigger color. So this is Yoshi's body, this is his head. And then this is the shell, this corner edge, corner block. This corner, this edge, and then there's this corner. If you pretend this is black, then you have like a pseudo shell. So just like you did for gem axe, where you swapped the real gem with the pseudo gem, you're going to swap the real shell with the pseudo shell. So you're going to slice like this, preserving the shell and not taking any of these pieces. You're going to slice and then you just get a two slice OBL. Use another version with the color swapped. Um, use the same idea. So you find on the Yoshi the corner edge pair and you find the pseudo shell which means it includes this corner. You want to hold it so that you can take down this shell without messing up this gem. And you want to swap the real shell with the pseudo shell like this and then you get good pair pair. Now we have Yoshi bird. This one can be a bit tricky to recognize, but once you realize that you have a Yoshi and a bird, put the gem of the Yoshi on the right side of the cube and preserve these two by one pairs. So if you held it like this, then it would break up these pairs. You don't want to do that. You want to hold it like this. With a bird, put it on the right side of the cube, just like the gem. And this is a locked in alignment, so I'm not going to change this alignment. So the bird is going to change alignments. And in this case, I have to misalign it. Now, if I were to slice and the bird would not be preserved, like in this case, it would be broken up, then it's good Yoshi bird, which is three slicer. So I would slice and then I would get good thumb thumb. Here's another bird Yoshi. So I would find my Yoshi immediately. I would put the gem on the right so that these pairs are preserved. So this isn't correct because it would break up the uh, two by ones. So I would hold it in the back like this. And then I would put the bird on the right side. And then this has to be my alignment because this one's locked in. And as you can see, if I were to slice, it would break up the bird. So it's good bird Yoshi. So I would slice and get good thumb thumbs. Now if you want to one look the first two slices of Yoshi Bird, after the first slice, cross this two by one, that's the same color as the gem of Yoshi, across the slice. So it's on the left side of the slice right now, 
and then after my first slice, I want to do a D so that it goes to the right side of the slice, and now I have a one slice OBL. In this example, I see that the two by one, the body of Yoshi, is on the left side, so I would slice, and then I would put it on the right side of the cube, like that, with a U, and then I would have a one slice OBL. Now you can also have bad Yoshi bird. Now if I notice that my bird is going to be preserved in this alignment, so if I were to slice, it would take the entire bird, then this is bad bird Yoshi. You just do a small M, or like a small M2, I guess. So you just slice and do 2-2 two, two, slice, and then you get a 2 slice OBL pair pair. In this example, I would have the Yoshi here. I would put the head of Yoshi on the right side, but this is wrong because these pairs would be broken, so I put it here. I noticed that since the whole bird would be taken if I were to slice, the whole thing would be preserved. That means it's bad bird Yoshi, and that means I just slice and then do a small M, which is negative 2, negative 2 in this case, and then I get good pair pair. Next case is kite cut, good kite cut specifically. It's good when you try to do the one slice CO, um, but you can't preserve both shapes. So if you have this extra edge here, when you try to bring it up, then it's good. You basically just cancel into LLEO by putting this edge of the cut directly below or above the edge of this kite and then you do an M2 and then you just get a one slice OBL. We have cut on top, kite on bottom. Um, we try to do one slice CO, see we have this extra edge so it's the good case. So we find this extraneous edge of the cut and this edge of the kite. We put them on top of each other then we do M2 into one slice OBL. Here this is just CO with an EO skip, this is good and kite. If you can preserve all the blocks and hold the pieces right next to the slice, then just do CO and make sure you preserve all the blocks. Here's another simple one. It's good TT, and it's good when the T's are the same color as each other. So, for example, here we have a white T on top and a white T on bottom, so it's good. And it's just one slice CO to M2. One slice, M2. Or a better alg, actually, for this particular case is slash small u slash one one slash and then here we have the white black mirror and um, you just literally do co eo so yeah let's also cover bad tt which is where the t's are different colors so we have black t on top white t on bottom you put the heads of the t's opposite of each other and you slice and then you get good cut kite and you're just going to do slice small u slice m slice and then you get one slice obl and here's the color mirror i usually like to put the top t on the right and the bottom t on the left and so i would hold it like this slice small u slice m slice and then one slice obl here's one of my favorites it is t tie so here we have a white t and a white tie and this is good t tie because the t and the tie are the same color find this extra edge of the t and you put it on the left side of the cube and then you find the knot of the tie and you bring the tie kind of next to this edge but you don't want to like pair it up like this you want to have this extra corner in between the edge and the knot and so that means you could also do it down here like this and as you can see you just get good thumb thumb from there to one look it after you bring up the knot you're going to want to do a small move so that you kind of bring this edge toward the knot so in this case it would be a small u um, because that brings the edge closer to the knot and if you were to bring the knot up to here then you would do a u prime a small u prime to bring the edge closer to here and then you just have a one size opial and while we're here we should also cover bad tai t which is quite similar and still good it's bad tai t when the tie and the T are different colors, so we have a white tie and a black T, so it's bad. Same concept, we put the stem of the T on the left, we bring down the knot of the tie next to it, and then we do a move to bring the stem of the T closer to the knot, like this, so that would be a small D. And then we just have good pair pair, which is a two slice OVO. Here's another variation of bad T tie, black T on top, white T on bottom, so it's bad. Bring up the knot next to the edge of the T like this, then we're going to do a small move to bring the edge closer to the knot like this, then we just have a two slice OBL. Here's another really nice case, it is good cut cut, just do one slice CO into M2. If you can preserve all the blocks and hold these pieces right next to the slice, just one slice M2, 
one slice M2. Our last three slicer is good tie tie, and it's good when the ties are the same color. So here we have black black, and here we have white and white tie. So basically what you do is you put the knot of the top tie here in the front left, and the knot of the bottom tie in the front right, so that if you slice, you get corner M2, and to one look you can slice, do a D or a D prime, and then slice again, and then just 2-2 two, two, like that. Color mirror, you put the knots in the same place, slice, D, slice, and then negative 4, negative 4 to cancel into 6-6, six, six, just like that. And I should probably show you how to do bad tie-tie, which is just a 4 slicer. It's where the ties are opposite colors. So you hold these in the same place, and you slice, and you just get good kite cut. So when you slice, you're going to do a small U, slice, and then an M, and then a slice, and then you get one slice OPL. So once again, slice, small u, slice, m, slice. Like that, and then one slice OPL. And then the color mirror, black tie on top, white tie on bottom, hold them right here, slice, small u, slice, m, slice, and then like that.